Approximately 20% is the lowest point that Bitcoin drops to. On each occasion it has arrived since Bitcoin's inception, the price has essentially experienced a surge of 70% to 200%, and according to Solana, that means a 50% drop in volatility. A massive rally occurs each time it reaches that point. This makes it seem like it's almost there. Solana leaped off the ground once it bounced off the beautiful wedge pattern. Today isn't going so well. Solana for no good reason at all. The next logical step, it seems, is for the bananas to ripen. Raul Pal, CEO of Real Vision, thinks that Solana and Bitcoin are going to have huge rises this cycle. Based on their historical performance, Pal shares his newest prediction for Bitcoin and Solana's promising future in a recent podcast. Pal has zeroed down on the trend in Bitcoin's price action. According to his research, Bitcoin has a history of strong rallies whenever its volatility falls below 20%. He notes that these upswings have resulted in returns ranging from 70% to 200%. The significance of this finding lies in the fact that it appears to indicate that the market for Bitcoin frequently goes through a period of low volatility before to a robust increase. Likewise, Powell notices a trend with Solana. A significant rally usually occurs once Solana's volatility drops to about 50%, as he points out. Solana recently broke out of a wedge pattern, which according to technical analysis can indicate whether a trend is about to reverse or continue. This technical indicator shows that Solana is doing well as it has bounced off the base of the wedge. I believe the time of consolidation has come to an end. During the election cycle, which is around halfway through the year, it happens frequently. Such behavior is typical, often concludes in July or possibly August. Also, remember that every quarter, Comes to a close with a crash in FedNet liquidity. That's how banks manipulate their balance sheets just like regular individuals. The FedNet liquidity dropped precipitously as we witnessed. Reconstruction should begin again today, making today the last day. While it has been flagged in advance, it is still possible. That it impacts assets as well. How everything appears, we appear to have reached the base. We dropped to 118 in April. Barely below 120. According to the chart I'm looking at with you, Solana. We then got into a great pattern of rallying up and down, forming a wedge. From here, I would expect us to simply ascend. A few months back, I covered this topic in Global Macro Investor. As another GME subscriber, Arthur and I share the same opinion on this matter. I get the impression that the BOG is setting us up for some fantastic hijinks. It's clear that BOG are experts in their field. Everybody loses money attempting to battle them since they've been manipulating the FX markets forever. As far as I can tell, they're now sucking in the final position. The Chinese people also require financial resources. Banks in Japan are the market for euros and dollars. At the moment, they are the most important players in the euro dollar market. It was intended that they would be short on funds. The United States will eventually provide them an unlimited line of intervention someplace. China, which is in dire need of dollars, and the treasuries will both receive this money as it flows back via the banking system. The Federal Reserve is also hesitant to provide them with a direct liquidity line. Therefore, the Fed cut is the ideal scenario if there is a supply of stunning liquidity that can come instantly. Whenever the Japanese step in, they'd simply bomb everyone. The Japanese have done this ad nauseum and they usually get the green light from the Fed when they do it because it maximizes return on investment. Yellen has been to China twice, as is well known. Yellen sells more trash bonds than anyone else in the world. In her day, she was like Mike Milken. The Chinese are claiming that they do not have the funds to purchase the bonds that she used to sell. This is an incredibly basic equation. All right, let's figure it out. It says, where can we get you the cash you need to pay out the interest on everyone's dollar denominated loans and then put that money back into the treasury? I believe it's in Japan. The market is tremendously preoccupied with the idea that the dollar yen will reach 200 or 300. My goodness, it's giving way. Their composure has slipped. Therein lies the present storyline. The public anticipates an intervention in the near future. They're holding their breath. The scale of the involvement is going to be crucial since it will demonstrate their support if they make a bold move. Thereafter, you will observe it, be it through the swap lines, the foreign central bank reverse repo or some other mechanism. Also, keep in mind that they often attempt to conceal the methods. Yes, that is my intention. The size that they go in is really the deciding factor. You know it's on if upon waking up one day we detect. 
that dolly is down 1.5% and the following day it occurs again and that's just the Japanese dumping a huge amount of money into the system all at once. Divergence in RSI is present. Everything is building up to the point where the BOJ employs technical analysis. In addition, they are competent in this area. Now we'll see. However, the dollar is overly tight and makes me think of 1998 all over again. Please tell me, 95, 98, it was dollar yen all the way. By monster size, I mean one of the largest exchanges in human history. Even if the Japanese stepped in, nobody seemed to mind. And just like that, it gave way completely. With the exception of Paul Trudeau Jones, who got it right, all of these men went totally bonkers with Tiger management. Additionally, it should be considered that, as was evident during last night's debate, the likelihood of Biden being replaced is exceedingly strong. Who will it be, and how will it affect the level? Playing field we have here? Well, it's a one gets the impression that Newsom is being positioned, but it could be anybody. Given that Newsom is a Californian, he is likely to be more substantively pro-tech. Even though they are all Democrats, the big tech founders have defected to Trump's camp. Perhaps Newsom can win them back, but it's remarkable that the Biden administration has lost them all. It was Newsom, not you who arranged for Xi to travel to California to see them. That's an entirely different matter. What we should all be considering, though, is the likelihood that Newsom is crypto-friendly. In a video that I will likely release today, I simply lay out all the relevant factors that I am considering in this. Ace and explain why I believe the trade is on. Plus, the Bitcoin chart for Solana is quite obvious. Yes, it is lovely. The ETH1 followed a similar pattern of stair-step consolidation. Once again, all of the relative continuation patterns trend higher after hitting the bottom of the wedge triangle channel, Solana is expected to provide yet another outstanding performance if this holds true. I mean, if the space is going to see liquidity, the risk curve will move outward. And Solana has the story in a ton of traction. Fire Dancer has not been released yet. So a lot has been said. This cycle, I think it will be extremely tough to defeat Solana. It will be. Extremely challenging to overtake Solana's narrative and momentum, even if Ethereum finds a huge use case, for example, how YouTube is suddenly tokenized on Ethereum. We have seen no change in global liquidity. It doesn't reveal any fresh liquidity. So far, the business cycle remains negative. That means people aren't producing money or aren't reinvesting their earnings yet. This no man's land is where you're essentially stuck for the time being. Afterwards, we will move on to the ETF. For the cryptocurrency market, that means fresh capital. After that, we can all have fun with that cash. Well, that's pretty much the way it is. Order for the crypto land economy to thrive, we must view it in this light. Require FDI or even hot money infusions from abroad. In any case, we require new funding. By summertime, the liquidity cycle had come to a close. There is a peak. However, the cryptocurrency market often doesn't reach its high until the year ends. Will it reach its peak earlier than expected? Neither do I wish to play for it, and I have no idea. We can get away without implementing rate cuts for just one item. Liquidity is the key factor. The liquidity that occurred long ago is actually being postponed by rate reduction. Looking back to 1994 to 2005, we witnessed the massive rate hikes which caused panic in the bond market and widespread fear of a recession. There was no recession. It was 95, 25, and 50 basis points that the Fed slashed. Even compared to the 1993 low, rates were significantly higher. Until the